I realized I hadn't posted any uh, uh, more information on the items I had done to this mill, even though I had recommended them to people and tried to describe a little bit how I was working them. But uh, I was going to use this opportunity while making parts for my uh, rail bending uh, tool that I thought I was taking some cuts and I thought I'd show how this stuff works that I had done. Um, this is uh, that little cordless screwdriver that I'm using for my for my uh, power table feed. That's a speed controller for it and a bypass for forward reverse. Uh, digital readouts for each X, Y, and Z. And uh, the vacuum for the chip. It gets most of it. If I had this thing off, you wouldn't believe the chip it's generating. But, uh, and then how, the capability of the cuts. So I'm going to go ahead and fire it up. You won't be able to hear much with the damn vacuum and such, but it'll, uh, I'll take a couple of cuts. You can see what it's doing and give you a sense in case you're ever trying to work with yours and uh, see what it's up to. So here we go. <laughs> That's a 30,000th cut in brass, so it's pretty easy on it. I could take more, but there's really no point. No, no sense beating up a machine like this. I have to take a total about an eighth inch off of this. Okay, I'm very pretty. That was the final on that one. Here we are on the Z axis. I'm going to go down to taking about 30 a pass, so 60 or so. I'm not getting too fancy with this. 60 and a half. Um, 275 here. And this is basically dropping. And then here we go. And this isn't an abusive cut. I could crank this up, but I don't see any point in beating up the machine. Uh, this is cutting very comfortably. Noisy, but... And this saves up. Oh, the cranking... Uh, and this works so well, I don't think I would buy another one if I, if I had the money or the part was available. It just works well. Okay, now I'm... And I'm doing a slight climb as I'm cutting it. Just past center. Uh, and for home hobby use, this is excellent for me. And it's a very accurate machine when I need it to be. Uh, that was evident in that little hand wheel we made from John. Uh, and back up the middle, a little past the center, and on 190, five. There we go, that's close enough. And one more roughing pass and then a finish pass. I had to stand this one up to keep it above the vice jaws, and I'm using a, actually a high-speed steel blade tool blanch. They just happen to be a good size, and they, they're ground and very square, very accurate. They just make a good stand up. All right, and I'll go down to my one on my line. Drop. Now we're coming down another 30. So we'll be at 90, and I'm going to finish at 105. I could probably even use this for a finished cut. Or this pass. But... This thing here has saved so much aggravation. <laughs> Can you imagine sitting there cranking it? 
and you tear it off and get it going fast enough for the feed rate you'd like to have. And like I say, this is sand more, and I have a little more in the controller, but eh. run this enough to get used to the crank and the dial <laughs> or the reaction there. Also that ball end on that hex piece, you can be all misaligned and it still works. That's, and it drops right in. You don't have nothing fancy about it at all. Enough. I'll finish this fast and then that's enough. I think you get the gist of it. Yeah. Watch that disappear. <laughs> right up in the bathroom. Okay. Here, this is this is ball end. That's the uh, that's from uh, a regular socket type ball end hex. And these bolts, I had to cut a little bit off the lead screw so I could tap these in. But that's where I drive from, and they're just standard bolts threaded in with some Loctite, and they make my socket for me. And again. You, them at it they drop right in it'll work at any angle so okay that's all i just thought that might be of interest to some of you who have these machines